I was here as an undergraduate in the 50s, then left here to do a full-time job in New Jersey and then Peace Corps and then on around the world, et cetera, et cetera. And then I was at Denver General and we had the students come down from CSU to do their uh, psych lectures, their phys dis internships, things like that. They suddenly needed a faculty person. I came up in 1973. I officially left in the year 2000. <laughs> so it's been a long connection. But you didn't really leave, did you? No, I stayed another year because we were going through accreditation, so I just shepherded through accreditation the next year. I've stayed involved because the OT department, I think, is great. Um, we are not part of the medical model, and so we're not in a medical institution. Um, we are the only OT department, as far as I know, in the whole United States that has occupational therapy out in front of the building. Um, we've been free to do a lot of wonderful things as a department. And so naturally, yes, I do want to stay involved. Uh, and I also, you know, having to struggle a little bit financially, I like to give a little bit. And so scholarship, of course, has been a big incentive too. And most of the faculty, well, I I'm now don't, don't know quite so many of them, but most of the faculty I know too. So yeah. <laughs> actually, I didn't start the scholarship. It was something that was given to me as a, a retirement gift when I retired. Up to that time, I had uh, contributed to the March Ball Scholarship, and, and I thought you know, that was very important. Uh, I continue to do mine because I do see that the financial need has not gone away for any of the students. In fact, maybe even more because a lot of them are working a couple jobs, a lot of them are married, uh, all that sort of thing, which adds to the financial burden. And so scholarships is only one of many ways, but it is one way to help out. We do have a luncheon when we can go, and, and those that are here get to attend. A lot of mine, uh, by the time they get the scholarship, they're going off on to level two field work. However, I have had uh, met a lot of them. and. As usual, it's just wonderful to see their li eyes light up when they say, oh yeah, I'm going to go into X, Y, or Z. And uh, when you see somebody who's found their life work, their direction that they want to go, it's just terribly exciting. Uh, so it's, it's great to see those kids and the eagerness that they have about what they're doing and their eagerness about OT. <laughs> this is one of those things where I am one of the, the rare people in the world that life just went straight correct for. I was thinking in junior high about maybe being a medical missionary. I didn't think I had enough art ability to do anything. Didn't think I had enough music, but I liked all of that stuff. When I was a sophomore, <clears throat> somebody came up from CSU, or then it was Colorado A&M, and they talked about occupational therapy. And the lights just went on and I said, that's it. And it has been it all my life. That's, it, you know. The reason it's it, <clears throat> I think, is because OT is positive. It's doing what people need to do or want to do. It applies to all ages from newborn to 100, whatever, uh, almost all diagnoses. Um, and, and when you have something that's positive and is varied, you can't get any better. Well, <clears throat> the future is unlimited because um, we're having more people get old and have problems. We have more people in the workforce that have had brain injuries or whatever. We have these veterans coming back from wars. We have kids with disabilities because of, I don't know, allergies, because of injuries, because of whatever. So <clears throat> the people who need help are not going to go away. That's always going to be there. You're never going to make a million bucks, but you usually can make enough to live on. So from that standpoint of view, I think OT has a very promising future. Uh, and then, um, as we're coming into the 21st, and I haven't talked to people in the department, so I don't know where this is going. But one of the things they were thinking about is some of the virtual training that might be done by the um, people who are coming back with traumatic stress disorder and things like that, where people can practice in a, a safe environment, the kind of things they're gonna need in this world that is so crazy for them and so threatening to them. And, um, and this part of the 21st century. And so I can see that being a part, uh, whether or not they get the grant, I don't know, but it would be wonderful if they did because this would be an ideal ca campus for that kind of approach, just ideal. So it's got nowhere to go but up. I thought about it because I, I was having trouble thinking about individuals and then I came up with Mary Elizabeth Linehan here in town and she was one of our OT students and she developed the, um, the Dance Express group where people with disabilities, a lot of them with mental retardation, but with other disabilities, have an opportunity to do drama, have an opportunity to dance, have an opportunity to do public performance, and to dance with, with um, some of the troops in town, not just 
by themselves. So I think she's, she has taken a population that most of us shove in the closet and just kind of forget about them. And she's made them obvious. She's made them uh, exciting. She's, she's done just so, such great work all on her own. You know, she's just done it. The other thing that I can think of is that the Center for Community Participation Upstairs. A long time ago, they were among the first people who said, these people with disabilities have a right to be out into community events and be um, visible. And so when we would have concerts down at the band shell or something like that, some of these kids would be down there dancing in front. Some of these kids would be sitting in the audience. It was the beginning of a presence that we, again, as a culture, did not allow very much and still don't allow to a great degree, although now the grocery stores have a lot of help that may have uh, been, been uh, participants up there. So I think it's becoming better. Um, it's probably not tremendously good yet, but at least the, that center has done so much to make these people people. One center, uh, or one part that's really caught my eye is the Center for Community Partnerships, which used to be the Center of Community Participation. It's been suggested maybe I can talk a little bit about why I've done the kind of life I have and, uh, and the desire to try to maybe give back, um, pay forward, um, get involved with, with anything that's going on. I think there's a satisfaction with being something beyond yourself, something that's helping somebody else maybe, um, that you can't get any other way. Um, I was so fortunate. Not only did I have a perfect first job in New Jersey where I worked with cerebral palsy kids 24 hours a day and therefore had as much control about changing their, their behavior and their life opportunities as, as anywhere you could get, I also decided that, that I needed to leave that job because it was so perfect and I figured I'd be there the rest of my life and that was not healthy. So I came home in October, and in November I got a letter from Peace Corps. I had, I had applied a long time ago, and you don't work that way with Peace Corps, but at any rate, I had gotten a letter in November saying they were going to have a project or two projects for occupational therapists. I think we were the first ones. And um, one of them was going to be in South America, and one was going to be in the Philippines. And I wrote back saying, oh, yeah, I'd like to go to South America. I'd like to learn Spanish, blah, 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 blah. And they wrote back and said, if you want to be in the Philippines, go to the Philippines, be in Los Angeles on such and such a day. So I went down there. Here are these 13, 14, 15 guys standing around <clears throat> where we were to meet the plane. And um, I thought, oh boy, have I gotten into the wrong group? And then I noticed one girl sitting over on the, on the corner. And I went over and certainly she was the other OT. <laughs> yeah. So two of us went to the Philippines, worked at the University of the Philippines, uh, trained students, set up clinics, gave lectures, and I think they're probably still laughing about a couple of the lectures I gave in Tagalog. However, um, it was just a marvelous two years. And um, I got to see people with leprosy. I got to see people with polio, which doesn't exist here anymore. Um, but I also got to see a lot about what makes a country good, the kinds of things that I think we need to avoid in this country to be, keep from becoming some of the, getting some of the problems that other countries have, like the gross, gross pollution and things like that. So all of that is impetus to say, what else is there that I might be able to help with a little bit? So right now I'm in my volunteer life, and that is how I do spend my time. Very active in a number of things. Uh, all of it terribly <laughs> rewarding and great fun. If my eyes and hands hold out enough through my volunteer life, then all that craft stuff is sitting there from my 50s education down in my basement, and I will go into my craft life sometime in the future. <laughs>